Yeah, this was good. Is this, this good, Daddy? Yeah, that was good. Make sure you pluck it from the stem. Mmm, and it's good. Oh, you like it? Hello, everyone. My name is Joshua Rudd, and yes, you must hand pollinate your strawberry flowers, even though they are classified as a self pollinating plant. Um, in this video, we're going to go over why you have to hand pollinate your strawberries and go over the different types of pollinating techniques in this video. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's go over why you must pollinate even though strawberries are self-pollinated. Okay, so there are first reason is there are no bees or wind and that will cause a low yield in your strawberries. I have placed a fan on here thinking that that would be enough, but you need more than just a fan. Uh, pardon all the noise my furnace is making. Um, so about maybe about 20% of the fruit yield when I, when I just had like a fan like this here, or even I had a box fan. But um, what's, what really started picking up my, my yield in strawberries was uh, hand pollinating. Oh, and another thing I'd like to add is when even the strawberries that were pollinated and set were very misshapen and very ugly. Let's see if we got some here. I've, I just started hand pollinating, so. Um, here's a here's an example. We could probably zoom in on this one here. You know, I'll uh, it's just not looking like a beautiful strawberry. Will it ripen? Yes, but uh, it's not fully pollinated, and so it'll be misshapen and very ugly, and it might not taste as sweet as if it was fully fully pollinated. Okay, so let's go over the parts of a flower. For this video, we will keep it simple. Uh, there are three main parts of a flower. You have the stalk, which holds the flower, the pistil, which are the female parts, and the stamen, which are the male parts. Pollination happens when pollen from the male part comes into contact with the stigma of the female part on each flower. The two types of pollination we are going to talk about today is self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination occurs when pollen from the anther is deposited on the stigma of the same flower or another flower of the same plant. However, plants don't like it when they do that because they want their genetic material to pass on to other plants of the same species to promote genetic diversity. One plant may be more resistant to disease than others, so that plant wants to share its superior DNA with other plants in the area, creating a new variety of plant. It also prevents the elimination of the entire species of a plant if a pest or disease attacks a specific strain or variety of the plant. That's why even though the anther and stigma are on the same flower, it is positioned so that it won't easily fertilize itself. As you can see here, we'll uh, go ahead and we'll just pluck a flower that, that's kind of small and ugly and we'll just go ahead and pull it up close. Here we go. All right, that's better. So as you can kind of see on the flower, you have the pollen, which are the little, which are called anthers. They are on the outside, those little balls in the outside and the pistil is the inner part, the circle, uh, the, the kind of dome looking like thing on the inside. And so if you notice that the pollen or anther is positioned away from the uh, pistil part. So initially, if, if this was not to experience any wind or any bees or anything, it would not be pollinated, even though it's a self-pollinated flower. So it wants to share its genetic material with other flowers of different plants. And so they want a bee to come to this flower, gather the pollen, and then deposit it on another flower of, the, of a different plant. And so that's why the, the uh, anthers or the place, the things that hold the pollen are on the outside and not like, you know, why don't you, a flower just pollinate itself? Well, it wants to create genetic diversity to prevent elimination of the species. And that, I kind of already, I just explained what cross-pollination is. So self-pollination, cross-pollination is 
when the genetic material of one flower goes to another plant across. So let's show an example of us pollinating plants. Here, let me grab my trusty pollinator. This is what I use to pollinate. It's just a, a makeup brush. I brought a whole kit for like $10 on Amazon, those little soft foundation makeup brushes. I don't know, ladies will probably know what this is more than I do, but it's soft and it's very bristly. As you can see, there's yellow on that from me pollinating. I don't ever wash it or uh, dust it off or anything. I want as much pollen on this as possible. So uh, let's go ahead and do a self-pollinating. So self-pollinating, this is how I pollinate, by the way, is you can see the anther and the stem in, and I just kind of, like I said, I'm not really gentle. You don't have to be super gentle because uh, just imagine this is a bee or something. And the bristles are very soft anyway, so it's very unlikely that you're going to do a, a heavy amount of damage to there. But, you know, be kind of gentle. And as you can see, I just self-pollinated. I kind of brushed the anther pollen right there. Like I said, the leaves don't even matter because there's no or the petals don't even matter because there's no bugs to for it to be attracted to. We're here in my basement. Um, here's another one. And so right now we are still self-pollinating. So we're just taking this one and then we're just brushing it around in a circle a little bit. Just trying to get there. Uh, we're still on the same plant, so this is still self-pollinating. But in a second here, we're going to go to a new plant. And then we're going to go to uh, this one back here. So now we just cross-pollinated to a new plant. But I grew all these from <clears throat> the same packages of seeds, and I used a lot of runners. So this is all still technically the same variety of strawberry. But um, if you have different varieties of strawberries, maybe you want to keep those separate. Like I know these have pink flowers, but there's varieties out there who have white flowers. And so if you want to have strawberry plants that only have white flowers then but I mean, if you're just eating the fruit, it doesn't matter anyways if you're just going to eat the fruit. Um, here's, a, here's an example of, uh, we'll show you some example of poorly pollinated strawberries. Uh, they, a lot of the times they won't even ripen, so I often I just pluck them off. Here's, a, here's one right here. As you can see, you can see on the outside, a couple of, couple, each of those little, little dots on the stamen or the pistol, sorry, the pistol, is a, is a berry, is a seed. And so when it's not all the way pollinated, you could see what was pollinated and you could see the inside of, the, of it wasn't pollinated and so kind of got that misshapen strawberry. And ever since I started pollinating, these are the kind of, you see how much, how much better these look. I'm not sure how well you can see these. I can see them pretty good, but you know, they got that beautiful round strawberry shape, and that and that's just what I did here. I just took it just took a couple of seconds, just maybe three seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and then I never have to do that again. Um, as you can see, once it's pollinated, within a day or two, it'll it'll lose all the leaves, and then the anthers on the outside will lose their pollen, and then you know that it's going to turn into a berry most of the time. Like, yeah, sometimes they just turn into not the best. Like I said, you're just, it's better if it was outside being pollinated by bees, but right now it's, it's uh, January, and there's no bees right now, so I guess that's a, a pro for growing inside is you can pollinate whenever. And it's not that hard. I could probably do all six of these plants in about five minutes. You know, maybe we can do another one back here. Keep showing you in case you keep on a watch. You pollinate, you know, just come in here, grab them, kind of just, bam, good to go. And see, I kind of tell this one's already been pollinated. It's already been grown into a berry. And then I'm also, I'm also in here. I'm also plucking dead leaves and stuff. Oh, I see this one's a bit dead, and I just, I just pluck the leaves and take them out. And then whenever I change the water out, I come in here and I vacuum underneath because you want the berries to rest on. Don't want them to rest on a bunch of 
yard gunk. But it looks like we got a lot of good uh, strawberries for us to pick. Hopefully my arm's not in the way. Uh, I struggled. Yeah, this is as soon as I started doing this, I stopped struggling getting berries, and I get like a ton of berries a plant now. So yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'm gonna have me some strawberries. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.